Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 4, my name's Camel and this video is going to be a walkthrough guide in which I will show you how to acquire the unique laser gun known as Good Intentions. I will also run through some very interesting ways in which it can be used and utilised. So first of all we will need to come to the Quincy Ruins. And on the Pitboy map Quincy Ruins can be found right here where my character is currently standing to the southeast of Diamond City. You also need to make sure that you don't come here during the quest Boy in a Fridge. If you're on that quest and come here, the gun will not spawn. Now up here on the bridge there is a gunner boss called Clint, who has gone one letter too far from my favourite thing. And once we find Clint, help him lie down with a shotgun. But yeah, once he's dead, in his inventory we will find the unique laser gun Good Intentions. And again, if you're on the quest Boy on a Fridge and you come here for that quest, Clint will not be holding Good Intentions and it will not spawn anywhere. This is an unknown bug, there's no reason for it. So if you can consciously choose to come here before getting that quest, be sure to do just that. As always, before modding it out in a very, very special way and checking out the weapon's base stats, I have reduced all my character's special attribute stats to one. I also have no bobblehead poke or magazine effects applied to my character. What this means is we will be seeing the absolute minimum base stats of the weapon. Now, because of this weapon's legendary effect, I actually want it to have super long range and do absolutely as little damage as possible. We'll get more in depth on this later on in the video, but for now, I'm going with the standard capacitor to get the absolute shittest damage I can. And this just takes the magazine size to 30. Next I'm going with the sniper barrel. We could go with the improved sniper barrel, but that does extra damage. So we just want the standard sniper barrel for that super range. This makes the gun semi-automatic charging, increases the damage by 75%, reduces magazine size by 21, taking it down to a magazine size of nine, increases minimum range by 11 times, and increases maximum range by 18 times, reduces sight spread by 20%, increases spread by 100%, increases VATS cost by 35%, and increases sight time by 5%. Next we're going with the recoil compensating stock. This turns it into a rifle. This reduces sight sway by 7%, reduces sight spread by 40%, reduces recoil by 30%, increases VATS cost by 20%, increases sight time by 10%, and increases bash damage by 100%. Then we're going to go with the long recon scope. This adds 10 times zoom, it tracks the targets, increases sight sway by 20%, reduces sight spread by 20%, increases VATS cost by 50%, and increases sight time by 20%. And then we're going to be adding the fine-tuned beam focuser. This is just to get some extra range. As we can see, it adds plus three times range, reduces spread by 30%, and reduces recoil by 15%. And once it has been modded out this way, again, not for damage, but to fully utilize that legendary effect. It has a base energy damage of 42. It uses the fusion cells as ammunition. It has a fire rate of 50. Its range is 263. Its accuracy is 110. Its weight is 7.8 pounds, and its value is 421 caps. And if we look up the top in the middle, good in intentions. Critical damage causes frenzy, and that legendary effect is the very reason we have chosen to go for little damage, but we do want to use this gun in a very special way. And although it's essentially impossible to avoid getting damage increasing perks, there are some other perks that can help us utilize fully good intentions. Such as Critical Banker, you can now save four crit hits to be used in vats when you need them the most. So you can store up critical hits to use on your enemies to frenzy them. And another one would be the Four Leaf Clover. Each hit in vats now has an excellent chance of filling your critical meter. Again, just to fill the crit meter a little bit more so you can use the frenzy ability of good intentions even more often. So now let's talk about why we want to do as little damage as possible and why I modded it out to be an absolute piece of poo when it comes to delivering damage. So you could use good intentions as a standard sniper rifle, and you could also make it do huge critical damage. But the thing with the enraging legendary prefix is, only critical damage makes an enemy go into a frenzy. So what you do want to do is suss out which enemy you're going to be fighting is the strongest. Then you want to go into vats and hit them with a critical hit. This will send them into a frenzy for I do believe 30 seconds. Now provided you modded good intentions out the way I did, it's not going to do much damage to that enemy that you've now done a critical hit on and is now in a frenzy. This means it's going to be harder for the rest of the enemies to kill this now frenzied strongest enemy. So although it might seem weird saying that you want to do as little damage as possible with a weapon, this is just so the remaining normal enemies around this now frenzied target have a much harder time taking them out and giving the stronger target more of a chance to kill the weaker targets that you now won't have to take out because the stronger frenzied target has done that job for you via, of course, the enraging 
legendary prefix of good intentions. Now, the longer you can stay sneaked, the better. That's why I've gone for this super range. So you can perform a critical hit on an enemy that is super far away and basically just have a group of foes fighting themselves to death while you're in the distance, just sussing out all the loot that they're carrying and that you're gonna get to pick up after they finish killing each other. Now a frenzied enemy will still attack you, but they will also just attack the closest thing to them. So of course we wanna make sure that you aren't the closest thing to the now frenzied enemy. Again, that's why we've gone with the super range. So just to paint a picture for you, as you approach an enemy base, you wanna sneak, pull out good intentions, and either through the scope or through vats, you wanna suss out which of the enemies in that group is the strongest. You then want to make sure that you have some critical hits saved up. In that, select the strongest enemy in the group you want to take out and do a critical hit on them. This will then send them into a frenzy for 30 seconds. And then you get to sit back, relax, and watch a group of enemies kill themselves. And if you would like a new drinking game, you can just take a shot every time I say enemy. Or if you don't want to count, you can skull a whole bottle at the beginning of the video. The results will be the same. But back to good intentions, there are actually some interesting things you can do. For example, ex Secured a critical hit on a super mutant suicider. That suicider will then turn around, run into his group of mates from a couple of seconds ago, and slam that mini nuke fist right into their faces, taking out both the super mutant suicider and his friends that he hits. I did test it out, and I was not able to send any robots into frenzies, so this does seem to only work on living enemies. There we go again, another shot. And when it comes to weaker targets, sometimes executing a critical hit just kills them normally, which isn't a downside at all. But it is much more efficient executing a critical hit on a stronger target and not killing them straight away. This way, of course, they can do more damage to the remaining infidels. No, infidels does not count as a shot. So good intentions used this way is more of a utility weapon than a damaging weapon. And of course, you do want to bring your other normal weapons with you. So if anything does go wrong, you can run in and take them out normally. Also, good intentions with its frenzying, legendary, enraged prefix is absolutely useless against single targets. As if you send them into a frenzy, and it's just yourself and that one enemy, then the only person they're going to attack is you anyway. Again, this is why you want to bring your normal weapons to deal with situations like that. So by no means a standard laser gun, but a very interesting one, especially when combined with this frenzying ability. However, it's by no means the best weapon to have this frenzying effect. For example, if you had a normal sniper rifle, you could put a silencer on it so your enemies can't find you as easily. Unfortunately, you can't silence a laser gun, so even even when you are super far away, you shoot a shot and they pretty much know where it came from straight away. Meaning you will have to act much quicker when the frenzying effect vanishes from the enemy you've hit. But good intentions is a guaranteed way to get a gun with the enraged legendary prefix, sending your enemies into a frenzy on a critical hit. And again, if you can at all avoid it, don't come here while you are on the quest boy in a fridge, otherwise Clint will spawn without good intentions in his inventory. And then you will never be able to get it. And yes, this is just caused by an unknown bug. Well, the bug's known, I'm telling you about it, but why it exists, that is the mystery. So it's not an amazing weapon, it's not a bad weapon, I would say it's a good weapon. This gun is also when you're really enjoying camping and thousands of years go past. Good intent eons. Oh yes, there's nothing quite like some good old intent eons. I'm sorry if that injured you, I did say it with good intentions. And here it is, good intentions in action. Well, kind of. <laughs>
there you have it ladies and gentlemen, I've been Camel and this has been my walkthrough guide on the unique laser gun known as Good Intentions, with of course its enraging legendary prefix. I do hope that this video helped you out in some way, and if it did I think you will be very interested in clicking on the playlist button on screen. This of course will take you directly to my Full Art 4 Guides playlist where you can select the videos you wish to watch freely. Or you can check in the description where it will be frequently updated with links to new Full Art 4 Guides that I upload. If you already knew what the word Eon was, please feel free to follow me on Twitter. The link can also be found in the description or you can search Camel Works on Twitter. And with all that said, I would like to thank you very much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here with me camping. And I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second.